All right, so welcome to lecture two for this week, which is covering awk. And uh, awk is another another tool we're going to be working with. We're going to be going through a bunch of um, different examples and uh, tying it in with regular expressions, as well as maybe covering a little bit about why quotes are important. So let's get started. Let's dive right in. Um, this is my file that I'm going to be working with yet again. Um, the cars file is should be familiar to you now um, and you probably remember working with this um, using grep and regular expressions and trying to answer questions like you know um, please select all the lines that um, have like three digits in them and things like that and we had to do a lot of like things like uh, you know grabbing a lot of like putting a space in there and then digits and then another digit and then like another digit Oop, getting that wrong and another digit and anchoring it to the end of the line and all this kind of stuff right um, I think you're gonna find with uh, awk uh, it becomes much much simpler to try and uh, pull out pieces of information like this so awk is a very, very convenient tool. It's a very good tool. Um, I think you're going to, I think you're going to appreciate awk by the end of this, having gone through the difficult work of trying to answer all these like questions um, and going and using sort of a roundabout regular expression to try and solve these problems. So maybe just to get started, I'm going to use maybe uh, one of my I'm just going to be uh, using uh, this is a test, something like that. Um, I'm going to be. I'm just going to use this to demonstrate sort of the first idea with awk. Okay. Um, so I'm echoing this is a test. I'm going to pipe this into awk. Okay. And awk will have uh, some syntax like this. And I'll talk a little bit more about this, but let's maybe just start with something very, very simple. I'm going to go print this. Okay. What do you expect is going to happen? Well, all it does is just print out the exact same line. Nothing really seemed to happen there, right? Um, but let's start to change this. So now I'm going to use dollar sign one, and I get back this. I go back over here is a test. So, awk is an intelligent program. Uh, it's an intelligent tool and it is able to um, choose different uh, columns or different words uh, based on one or more spaces or one or more white space characters. Okay. Um, so I can do something like this. Let me add some more spaces over here. And uh, we'll still be able to grab these. OK. So this is actually a very, very handy tool if you're going to be working with something like uh, the cars file, which um, has multiple spaces. We don't have hard tabs in there. We have like, you know, four, five, eight different spaces. Um, and it's really hard to tell how many spaces. Uh, which makes it kind of really inconvenient to work with. But now with this, um, we can work very easily with this file. But maybe before we move on, I just want to point out something that's pretty important over here. Um, so let me jump back over here. You'll notice that um, I was very, very uh, clear about putting single quotes here. Um, and hopefully if you remember anything about introduction to bash scripting, uh, you'll understand why. Um, dollar sign one has different meanings. In awk, we're going to be selecting the first column or the first uh, field or whatever you want to call it. Um, and in bash scripting, of course, this would be choosing the first argument passed in. So you can think about it kind of like this. If you had this line inside uh, your bash script and you have double quotes here you're allowing 
the interpreter to perform substitution. Now, we want dollar sign one in the awk context. We want to be passing this instruction to awk without any substitution or any manipulation or any change um, by the interpreter, right? Um, I don't want to be performing a substitution here. I want to be selecting the first field. So this is why the strong quotes are very important over here. We prevent Bash from doing any substitution. Thus, whatever's inside these single quotes is passed to awk without any manipulation. And awk can go and interpret this in the way that we want it to, which is to print this. Okay? So probably best for set in awk to be always using single quotes. Um, Later on, if you get into a professional role where you're working with Bash all the time, you will get into the situation where you want to be maybe um, passing in a variable, um, but maybe keeping this, or I don't know. It, you know, there's a lot of different use cases. Um, in that case, all I can tell you is go and read the man pages because there's a special option for doing that, but we're not covering it in this course. Okay, so with that word about quotes out of the way, let's go back over here, and uh, I'm going to be using a lot of this. Let's um, let's go ahead and use awk like this. Let's go awk, and I'm going to go print dollar sign one again, and let's say cars. Okay. So you see that we're selecting the first column very easily. Let's change this to four, and we're getting these. And now let's mix and match. Let's do dollar sign one, dollar sign two. And what we get back is columns one and two. Um, so you can see this is a very, very useful tool for a lot of things. So now I'm getting back brand name, model name, and price. Um, we don't have to goof around with like multiple digits and putting spaces in there and anything like that. We can just say, I want the fifth column, the second column, the first column, whatever. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I think uh, maybe what I'll, I'll clear the screen over here. I'm gonna go back and uh, I'm gonna keep cars up here on this screen and then I'm going to be working with it on this screen over here. So let's build that up a little bit. Okay. Um, so once again, just a very straightforward print this. So you'll remember um, when I was using this with uh, this is a test, it just prints back the entire line. Um, so dollar sign zero is going to be giving you back. The entire line, it's not going to be selecting any of the fields. It's going to be basically selecting everything. So it's kind of useful. Um, here's another built-in that you might want to learn. Well, you'll definitely want to learn if you want to do well on quizzes. Um, I'm going to be giving it NF right now. And NF stands for the number of fields. So if I'm just printing this, let's just print that and see what we get back. What we're getting back is a bunch of fives, which is weird, but okay. Um, but what, were the, what, do we, what does this mean? Well, this is field number one, field number two, three, four, five. So this is actually giving us the number of fields that we've got in this file. It's telling us um, how many different columns we can be selecting from. And watch what happens when I take this and I add a dollar sign to it. So now we're doing a substitution. Now we're not getting back a five, but we're giving back a dollar sign five. So you should remember what dollar sign five is gonna do. That's right, dollar sign five. If we just print out, if we're just entering this command like this, we know that we're gonna get, be getting back the price, right? by using NF, um, we can basically just tell it uh, we want back the last field, whatever that might be. Could be 6, could be 8, could be 17, doesn't matter. 
we can also do something like this. We're going to say, um, I want, I'm going to put that in brackets because you need the brackets. I want the second last field. So our NF, our number of fields is five. Subtract one, four. So what we're going to get back is this guy right here. And there you go. And of course, you can you can keep combining stuff like that. It's totally fine. Let's do this. And now we're getting Chevy 60, Ford 45, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so I think for the next couple of examples, this is not something that you will need to do or produce for the quizzes or the exam. I just thought it was really, really cool. Um, we're going back, we're gonna do awk. And we're going to be putting this in single quotes and crap brackets around here. You can think about whatever's inside the curly brackets as being an action that you want awk to perform. Later on, we're going to see how we can uh, select um, like uh, line numbers and things like that. Uh, but right now, I'm interested in the what we're producing from it. Okay. Um, so let me go print dollar sign one so you should know now that that's going to be um, our first field our second field or column if you prefer and then the next thing I'm going to be putting some extra characters between the double quotes I'm gonna put in a colon I'm gonna put in a tab I'm gonna put in a space and a dollar sign and then the next thing I'm gonna do is be calling that last field there so what you'll notice is I'm I'm actually entering a bunch of uh, special characters I'm using this and just um, I'm defining how I want this to look and you'll notice now I've got you know brand name model number uh, this is you know field number one field number two the column the tab the dollar sign literal dollar sign and then the price Lo and behold, I'm taking this file that was difficult to work with, and with just a couple presses, um, or just you know, just a couple instructions, I am changing the format. And think about this. I can also do something like this. Um, I'm going to do an R. So, and R, I wonder what that's going to do. Let's have a look. Eh, I kind of messed my formatting up a little bit. Maybe I can do better than that. Let's do two tabs. And eh, it didn't really help. Okay, um, I can go back and figure out what I got to do. But you'll notice now with NR, what I'm getting back is the number of the row. So I am able to generate basically line numbers for this and um, just use this to format my stuff really nice and maybe what I want to do is not do this I'm gonna do uh, I'll just uh, do a hash instead now I'm doing this so I'm the one in control I'm the one defining this formatting right here pretty cool huh okay so that's not the only thing we can that's not the only thing uh, we can use the NR the number of the row for. Uh, we can also use this to be selecting ranges of rows. Um, very, very similar to how sed works, right? When I was using sed and basically doing, you know, stuff like, you know, 5AP, stuff like that. Um, I'm going to do something similar with awk, okay? So what I'm going to do, put everything in single quotes. I'm going to define the number of row here. It's going to be 5 and NR, the next NR is going to equal 8. So this is me defining the range. And once again, over here, what I can do is give Oc the instruction, the actions that I want it to take. Okay, so let's take this apart. Everything in the single quotes is an instruction to Oc. Anything before the curly brackets is what I'm choosing. Uh, could be the number of rows. It could be this. This is going to give me back a range of rows. And everything 
inside the curly brackets is going to be the action that I want Oct to perform on whatever rows I've selected here. Okay, so I run this. You're going to notice what I'm getting back is line 5, line 6, line 7, line 8. And what I asked it to do was print only the first and second fields, which is what we get over here. One thing to point out here, this is a range. We don't have any way in awk to be specifying. Uh, we don't have any way to be picking and choosing uh, you know, lines in here. So there is a way, but you know, you would have to go and do a lot more research to figure it out, and we're not gonna ask you a question like that on the quiz. Okay, so let's move on to some more interesting sort of examples. Um, Awk is a very, very smart tool. Uh, when we were using grep and rejects, uh, we found that it wasn't really smart enough to figure out numbers like this. Um, if you want to get, you know, a range between, uh, you know, 1000 and 9999, nine, sorry, um, you're basically doing it in a dumb way. You're counting the number of characters. Um, Awk is much smarter than that. So let me show you some examples that we can do. I'm going to give Awk, and this is the instruction. This is what I want to be searching for. Okay, what do you expect this to do? Uh, I am pointing at the third field, which is going to be this field right here, this column. And what I'm going to say is uh, I want the third column to equal 65. And what it's going to do is print out two results, both of which have 65 over here. And I can also combine this with a particular action I want it to do. I want to be printing dollar sign one, dollar sign two, dollar sign three, something like this. So hopefully this is a good example. This is how I'm selecting. This is what rows I'm interested in. And this is what I want to do with them once they've been selected. This is all well and good, but awk is also capable of doing number comparisons. So let's say that I want, um, I'm interested in anything that is newer than 60, let's do more than that. Let's do anything newer than 80. Let's try this. Now you'll notice what we're getting back is 1998 over here, 83, 81, 82, we're not getting 08. Well, whatever. I mean, this is still a lot smarter than trying to use grep and regular expressions, right? We're able to do number comparisons. We're able to do uh, greater than or equal to. And now we're going to include the 80 in our results. And just to show you another example, um, remember this quiz question, something like this, right? Uh, we wanted to get. We're interested in only the um, cars that are between 1,000 and 990. Well, let's just do something like 10,000, yeah? So this is obviously much easier to work with. And finally, because all things lead back to regular expressions at some point, um, let's go and use an example over here. Um, so once again, I'm going to use the single quotes. Um, I'm going to use curly brackets. So this time I'm going to be selecting something. I'm going to be selecting a regular expression. I'm going to just define cars over here. So similar to said, uh, if you want to be um, doing a pattern search for a regular expression, you're going to be using the slashes. Um, let's do anything that starts with H, okay? And what I want to do is maybe just, uh, just to go back and remind you about what this is going to do. 
I'll just do something like that, and then I'll do dollar sign one, dollar sign two. Okay. Let's have a look. So you can see this was very nice. Um, any of these lines that are beginning with the H, we're going to return that. It's also going to write give us the uh, line number, and then we're just choosing to print uh, field one and field two. And there we go. We got Honda Civic and Honda Accord. Um, these are the only two that begin with an H. Okay, and I think it's time to show you maybe um, one last thing. Uh, this is going to be combining a bunch of different things. We're going to be specifying a field to work with, and then we're going to be using a regular expression pattern match with that specific field. Okay, this is going to look a little bit crazy. There's some new things going on here, but uh, just follow me, okay? So we're going to be using awk, this, cars, right? Okay, so um, let's be working with this column right here, okay? So I'm going to be specifying, whoop, that's the wrong, dollar sign five. Now, um, one specific thing about this is um, if you want to be um, doing a rejects pattern match with this, we have to specify it actually with a tilde, okay? The next thing I'm going to be doing is putting stuff in slashes, okay? So this is a special thing. Um, we haven't talked about it in this course, and you probably won't have to wait, work with it too much, but uh, this is going to do a pattern match. Um, and inside a regular expression, uh, what I'm going to do is use both of these anchors. So we're really limiting um, beginning of the line and end of the line. But in this case, since we're pointing it at the fifth column, we are looking at the beginning of the fifth column and the end of the fifth column. Okay? And we're just using this to limit stuff and um, make things match properly. Okay? If you get that, great. If you don't get that, just you know, follow along as I do this. So let's say that what I'm interested in is any of these where we have a three followed by, you know, three more three more numbers. So I'm going to put in three. I'm going to specify a number and then the let's say that I'm looking for one two three more of these so I can actually use extended regular expressions for this so anything with a three followed by three more digits okay and you'll notice it works actually um, this is the only way that it works if you take things out um, you'll find that it breaks pretty quickly so if I do that, no, oh, it actually does work. Oh, never mind. Guys, I'm wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, but you'll see, yeah, this doesn't work. So we'll go back here. Um, using the anchors is usually just better practice anyway because you're really defining stuff and making it uh, a little bit stronger. Uh, so let's do something like this, and let's do it's going to be either 3 or 4. There we go. Okay, and the last little thing I want to talk about is uh, specifying delimiters. So like I said, um, awk is a smart tool. Um, it is looking at a number of white spaces, uh, one or more white spaces basically. So it's smart enough to be parsing through three spaces here, and then one, two, three, four, four spaces here, and then more spaces over here and it's able to work with this. Um, but let's say that we are working with something that is not using spaces, that is using something else. Um, so let me show you another example. This one's a little bit more real world. Um, are you all familiar with Wireshark? Wireshark is 
a program that is a packet sniffing program. So we use this for a lot of network diagnosis or um, you know network security and stuff like that. We can look inside packets and uh, see what is going on. We can actually watch TCP and IP stuff um, working in real time. So this is a tiny little sample of a Wireshark uh, log file that I generated for a different course, one that you'll probably be taking soon. Um, you'll notice that I've got a lot of bit, a lot of different fields here. Um, let me just shrink this down so you can read it a little bit better. That looks a bit better, right? Okay. Um, so you'll notice I do not have spaces in this. I do have some spaces, but that's actually not the way that I want to be separating these different fields. We've got a timestamp over here. We've got a number. Uh, we've got source and destination and protocol and junk like that. Um, so, awk, uh, let me take this, let me clear that. So if I'm using awk with this and I just say when I want to print, um, oops, let's say I want to print uh, three and four, and five, something like that. I'll use NF for one of these. So I'm going to look at the the third field, the fourth field, and the last field. And I'm going to be pointing it not at cars for once, but Wireshark. So we're going to run that. We're going to get a bunch of garbage. This didn't work out properly. Why? Because we're trying to separate still by number of spaces. That's not how it's going to work. So. Uh, let's introduce an option to awk and what I'm going to be giving it is a specif specific delimiter. I'm going to be forcing it to use commas instead of spaces and when I run this I get something that is a little bit better. You can see I'm getting my source IP, my destination IP and some just information which has a bunch of other interesting information in it, you know, sequence, ACK, and all that kind of stuff. So you're seeing a lot of TCP flags and stuff going on here. Um, that should about cover it. So on the quiz, what you can expect to see is some of these special things. You should get, you should be getting um, comfortable and familiar with the pattern, the match over here, and then the action to take end with the file name. Um, know what the dollar sign one to up to NF is going to be doing. So remember NF. Remember what NR is going to do. Remember how to do a pattern match. Um, if I'm really tough, I'll put a question like this, uh, matching specific fields with a regular expression here. Well, it's really not too bad. As long as you remember the tilde is what we're using to match regular expressions and the capital F to give a delimiter. Okay. There are some practice questions in here. Have at it if you feel like you need a little bit more um, uh, practice above and beyond what the assignment can provide for you. Okay. That's it for now.